All right, Bruce, we're down in Bruce's new fish room. And even though we put out a very brief preview uh, a couple weeks back, about a month ago, when he, it was just three days after he put the sand and gravel and different things in the tank and just some cuttings of some plants, which now I can see are really grown in while you were away on vacation it's, for a couple of days. They fill up pretty nicely. And so let me just capture the whole room and then we'll figure out how to present the individual tanks. And again, introduce us to what you have in here. There's six. Well, I ordered six of the baddest, scarlet baddest. Well, we'll go back to the tanks first. Six, what size tanks? Oh, 10 gallons. All right. Six 10 gallons and two 29 gallons. All right, hold on while I get the 29s into focus here if I can. And I may have to set back to be able to show them properly. All right, and this is, so these are both 29s down this end. And then the other one is right here. And I can edit out this movement, no problem. So. And so there's the second 29. Yep. Oh my God, look at the lily plant in there. Yeah, it's transferred from the tank upstairs. Wow, that is doing beautifully, as we'll see here. Look at those leaves. And I see the CO2 in the background. So you got CO2 on that tank. Yeah. Is that the only one you have CO2 on? Yes, that's right. The only one down here. Well, it certainly does seem to work, especially on that particular plant, both upstairs and downstairs. And then you have the Amazon sword in the center. And then some of that plant that we... Uh, clipping from that one of uh, Disc Madness. That's right. That I thought I was being taken with the yeah, I know. seven little sprigs for <laughs> ten bucks. Yeah. And how it's overtaken every tank it's in. Yeah. But again, you're. Are you at the stage where you're ready to put fish in these tanks now? Pretty much, yeah. All right. And so this is just plants at this point. Yeah, the only the only delays were the fact that you know my brother-in-law was coming from Alaska, and he's a birder, and of course uh, you know he had he had rented a place down in Cape May and invited us to join him down there, so. He only left this morning, actually. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about the one tank you have some fish in because okay. the fish are so small. I'm going to try to Scarlet change Scarlet baddis it. is what they're called. Say it again. Scarlet baddis. Okay. And I see one back by the, the sponge filter in the back. Let me zoom in a little bit and see if I can capture them. There's one right up front here, too. Oh, yeah. I see that and now. They're very small. One full grown, they only get about 1.2 inches. Point to that one again. Right here. There we go. They're very curious fish. They'll just stop and they'll look over things. And they might reach down and take a bite of food. Probably some um, uh, small microscopic food that they're feeding on. I'm I did to... feed them some of that uh, micro worms this morning because there were some already climbing up on the uh, inside of the wall of that uh, uh, culture that I had out there. As a matter of fact, I can send you a starter culture home. No, there. I'm going to be fine. You bet. <laughs> Remember, mine's in the main house. Last yeah. thing my wife needs is a culture of worms growing in well, our living room. You put it in a closet, don't even tell her. <laughs> she doesn't miss a trick, so <laughs> that would never work with her. And she's so supportive of my hobby that I don't want to test it in any way, shape, or form. And so, that, what's what your plan for this tank? This one is the black background, black sand, right. and you were originally going to put black and white fish in there. I was thinking of doing that, but I decided that I like the color of the bass, but I, they, they're not full grown yet. They haven't developed their full color yet. And they so you got just two of them in there? A brilliant scarlet color. Two of them? No, there's five I, of them in there. Oh, okay. Well, I see three I now. I six, but one came dead. Okay. So they give me credit for that. Oh, they do give credit? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, the next time I order, I'll, I'll get credit for that. Oh, okay. But I had to notify them within, I think, four hours after I get my shipment. Uh-huh. If anything was dead. And now moving just to the left, into the blue tank, as I call it. Right. All right, what's the plan there? You well, were originally blue gouramis, as I yeah, recall. Yeah, I might put some rams in there as well. And all these are just cuttings from the plants upstairs. Everything, yeah. Every tank is just beautifully laid out with a limited number of plants, as yep. Bruce, as you do. Oh, yeah. Versus as I do. I doubt I mean, that's going to show up moving, on the... The filter's moving a little bit of the water, too. But mm -hmm. 
in the micro water life has its own movement. And what is it you're calling it? Micro? I just call it micro water life. Oh, micro water life. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's not a I'm name like, or something. It's no, just a cr- probably a protozoan of some yeah. sort. Yeah. All right. And so, again, just CO2 in the 129. All the rest of these are just straight sponge filters into a back filter. Right. And again, uh, starting from scratch, you design this room so it's got outlets every place. Yeah. And it's all controlled centrally. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's got himself a uh, sofa bed in here that he can lay here and watch his that's fish. Right. Maybe when somebody's going to breed, you're going to wait and watch and yeah, see him being that's born. Right. That's right. <laughs> You know, I bred a long, long time ago, dwarf coronas. Oh, really? And uh, they were so pretty as a as a school of babies. It was a school of uh, slightly reddish blue color. Mm-hmm. Were very attractive, and just a swarm. Yeah. You know, because they're so tiny when they're born. And what were you feeding them? Um, baby brine shrimp, newborn shrimp. And were you able to get them up to a decent size, or did you lose them on Some the way Yeah, but I lost quite a few of them yeah. as they grew. And, uh, but I wound up eventually with a dozen adults. Good. And the males are very attractive. And the uh, the babies, as I said, the swarm was sort of a reddish blue color. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was very attractive just to look at the swarm. Now talk to me a little about your thoughts in your color scheme because all the four lead tanks here are all a natural gravel right and it's a very fine gravel it's not dust but it's uh, finer than the yeah the gravel I have yeah. and then you went into the blue and, that and then the black has, has the white sand and then the white sand that Ray used to use on all his tanks which did so well with his uh, catfish breeding okay. given that kind of sand for some reason yeah. or other and so what were your what's your thinking as to why you went with well, uh, four like plane the, and I like the natural look mostly. I use black background on all the tanks. With black being such a neutral color, um, you know everything shows up well against it. I used to, uh, I mean, I, I sold the background paper in the shop, but I always advise people. I'd say, what do you want the focal point of your eyes to be? The things in the tank or the background behind the tank that has a yeah. scenery of some sort. Right. And a lot of people liked it. I mean, I sold it. Yeah. But uh, I'd advise people just use the black. Mm-hmm. Because then what's in your tank, your fish and your plants become, become the feature. Yeah. And I can see the baddest a little bit closer now that the, we've got the, whoops. Yeah, before you leave, I'll, I'll feed them some of those worms, and you'll, you'll get to see them. Okay. But they're so the worms are so tiny, you can hardly see them. It's interesting because being as small these fish are, the tank looks huge. Yeah. As opposed to saying adding two big blue gouramis in the blue tank, yeah. for example, which. Well, that, that's all I'll be able to keep in there is just those fish because they're kind of shy, and uh, other fish would outcompete them for any food. Okay, that makes sense. And so, so they, that, that's all I'll keep in there, more than likely. I mean, I might put some shrimp in there, but it would, uh, they might eat the, the newborn baby shrimp. Hmm. So eventually, I'd wind up with probably no shrimp, or very, very few shrimp, only those that were able to grow to a decent size. Because these would eat the newborn baby shrimp. Yeah, I guess that it would be the right size for their food, wouldn't it? Yeah. Especially when, I mean, they're going to get a little bit bigger than what they are. They are pretty small. Now, I'll, I'll show that. you a picture in the book of what color they can develop. Now, let me add, you did, the, you did these online, you said, right? Yeah. And so what... I bought it from a place that uh, sells plants and snails, and uh, they sell shrimp also. And so, may I ask you what they cost? These? Yeah. These were about eight dollars a piece. That's what I thought. As I recall, they're not cheap. No, and then you, you, you somehow think small fish should be. <laughs> that's expensive. Yeah. Not true. No, not it doesn't true. necessarily go by size, but yeah. by uh, availability. Yeah. And um, of course, by the time you add the uh, freight in, you're probably up another four or five dollars a fish. Yeah, but 
Have you bought many fish online, or is this, this a new is adventure? the first time I've ever done this? That's what I was thinking, and yeah, so I usually want to see the fish that I'm getting. Yeah, that's fast the fun. And yeah, and the uh, the discus place has a lot of other good fish too. That's that's where I'd like to go. You know, first time out. And so at this point, what are your plans as far as fish in these other tanks go? Well. And I know you're just I thinking of it. I have a lot of different uh, varieties that I can keep, but I don't know what's going to be available and when it's going to be available. Uh huh. So I just kind of play it by ear. So are you interested in going up to Disc Madness sometime soon and seeing what they yeah, have? Yeah, I was thinking maybe one day next week. Yeah, let me we'll see what I schedule. To, well, I'd love to go with and, you, of course. And we have to um, call in advance and, and yeah. you know, make an appointment with them for a time, a day. I mean, that's the way they operate. Although I understand uh, when people come to the door, oftentimes they'll let them in even though they haven't made an appointment. Mm. Because, after all, they want to do the business. Yeah. Well, that was unusual when you first explained that you had to go fishing by appointment, but yeah. uh, I can understand it once we were there. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't think they want a lot of people just coming in and looking around and buying nothing. I'm you trying know. to see if we can get both our heads in on this shot. Sorry. Right. Yeah, here we go. All right. Yeah. Anyway, I'm really impressed with what you've done down here. Okay. Yeah, I got to show you something down this end that you gave me. Oh, wow. And yeah. And it, you know, only in that tank for some reason. There must be the water conditions must be just. Look at that. Just correct for it to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe it's it's Myriophyllum that you gave me. Mm-hmm. And it's only that one plant that uh, developed that type of growth. Wow. I mean, it doesn't Pretty look cool. anything like the original. No. Tank number two. Look at the beautiful red in the leaves of that plant, huh? Yeah, that's a red mirror film. And then or fox tail, water so wisteria is doing so well. Yeah. Yeah, water wisteria is very strong. And then over here we've got the red cabamba that's doing beautifully here with the light. Yeah. And you've got LED lights on all these tanks. Yes, I do. It's a type of moss. Huh. Um, they use the name to describe it as, as flame. And the plant right behind it is what? It's like I gave you a bunch of that. It yeah. goes like crazy. Uh, it's for a me. type of mirror film. Yeah, the that's what I style, thought. Some people call it. And then we're back into the blue tank. Yeah. And how beautifully those plants are doing. Well, you see the end growths on the, on this. It does look kind of like flame. On that mossy. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's amazing how interesting the tanks are, even without fish. Yeah, with yeah. all the different plants you've got here. That's right. And it's amazing how that tank with a little gravel developed that uh, growth in the water. Mm -hmm. Microscopic growth. And so for now you get a sense of the room with the 229s down at the end and all these six 10 gallon tanks right along the front here. And we're both sitting on this bed. It makes it very comfortable to sit down here and watch the fish. And he's even got an air conditioner in a window in this room down here in the basement. That's right. Pretty cool, Bruce. Pretty cool. Yep.